Okay, <clears throat> yeah, in this video we're going to introduce uh, the method of mathematical induction. Uh, this is a method of proof. Um, so let's uh, introduce it with uh, some examples. So uh, suppose we uh, wanted um, to prove uh, whether the following statement um, um, so suppose we're given the statement um, uh, that says uh, p of n equal to n into n squared plus 2 this is for n being a natural number um, suppose we are told that this is always divisible by 3 so this is the same as uh, uh, the number <coughs> produced here is always going to be a multiple of 3. So suppose we wanted to prove uh, uh, whether this statement is true or false. Okay. Um, now before we get on with uh, how we could prove or disprove this uh, let me just mention that a statement like this is what we call <clears throat> a mathematical proposition okay so this is uh, called a proposition so this time the proposition is that n times n squared plus 2 is always divisible by 3 for uh, all natural numbers by the way uh, just for in case there are some of us who have forgotten this so natural numbers are the basically counting numbers so it's your positive integers uh, excluding zero <clears throat> so one two three four etc so to prove this uh, proposition or otherwise to prove it true or false uh, one option we could take is uh, what is called uh, proof by exhaustion so we could uh, use the uh, just say we could use proof by exhaustion proof by exhaustion now um, how does proof by exhaustion work Oh, just proof by exhaustion right okay. so in proof by exhaustion we work out we have to work out uh, all the possible cases all the possible cases so <clears throat> in this case we're going to ask ourselves the set of uh, natural numbers uh, how many um, elements does it have and uh, we shall find that this case this set has got an infinite number of integers so that is going to be partly uh, the problem of uh, this method 
but let's just um, work out uh, the first few cases here um, so in the top row we're going to have our <coughs> counting numbers and then in the uh, second row we're going to work out n into n squared plus 2 okay so we're going to in each case uh, take the this number here and substitute it there so for n equals to 1 this is going to be 1 times 1 squared plus 2 so this number is going to be 3 and then we're going to have for n equals to 2 we're going to have 2 times 2 squared plus 2 2 squared plus 2 is 6 6 times 2 is going to be 12 now we can see that uh, each of these is indeed divisible by 3 and then for 3 we're going to have uh, uh, 3 here 3 squared is 9 plus 2 is 11 it's going to be 11 times 3 so this is going to be 33 which is also divisible by 3 then for 4 we're going to have 4 squared which is 16 plus 2 is 18 and then 18 times 4 is going to be 70 2 so um, 18 times 4 so it's going to be 72 so that's going to be and again 72 is divisible by 3 um, perhaps that's what we're going to have uh, time for so we're just going to end this table here we could of course keep going but part of the problem with this method especially for this uh, proposition is the fact that we have got an infinite number of cases to to cover so let's say um, the disadvantage of this method um, or let's say the uh, trouble uh, or, or problem uh, of this method um, for the current proposition um, proposition um, which has got an infinite uh, an infinite number of cases um, is that uh, it is impossible to cover all of them to cover all of the cases so that means we're going to go um, and uh, reach a point and then in this method if you don't exhaust all the possible cases then the your proof is going to be incomplete now the um, method of mathematical induction uh, which we are talking about in this uh, section uh, that problem will not arise so with the method of mathematical um, induction Uh, which we are going to abbreviate M M I. Um, so that difficulty of uh, 
uh, an infinite number of cases is not going to arise does not arise all right <clears throat> so let's uh, look at uh, this method so mathematical induction so how does this method work um <clears throat> So before we go into the mathematical details, um, so typical analogies for this method uh, include uh, a uh, step ladder. Uh, this method can be likened to uh, a step ladder um, so let's just talk about a step ladder for a moment before I talk about the other uh, analogy so in a step ladder uh, you have uh, you have uh, your um, Yes, so in a step ladder you have got uh, rungs. Uh, um, so if uh, if this, this side is the ground and uh, this is your uh, <clears throat> target uh, point uh, at a higher elevation that you want to go to so you go through uh, these one by one so if you like um, we could say this one is the base uh, rung uh, this is our target here so in order for us to go from here to here we don't do all these uh, at once or simultaneously so first to go from the ground to the base uh, rung then we go to uh, number two then number three then number four then number five until we get to our height so um, it's going to be a bit similar with uh, mathematical induction so um, to prove for all the cases we'll just want to prove that you can go from one case to the other wherever you find yourself um, in the step ladder as it were okay so that's the first uh, analogy <clears throat> the second analogy uh, is the case of uh, falling dominoes um so in that case uh if we imagine that we have got uh, a uh, stack of uh, say books uh, lined up like this okay um, then in order to um in order to flip all of these we just need to flip the first one and then the first one is going to um, hit on the second one etc so if we just push this one uh, then it's going to um, hit on the second one and then of course the second one is going to uh, hit on the third one the fourth one and then so by just um, tipping this one over we we'll basically um, cover all of them um, so um, in the method of mathematical induction 
there are three steps. Um, so the method of mathematical induction has uh, three steps. <coughs> Conduction has uh, three steps. Um, namely, so in step one, um, we um, do what is called the base case. Okay. So um, you're going to remember that from uh, this example there where we say that is the base run. Um, so in the base case, um, we test the proposition. Uh, so proposition is uh, tested for a particular case okay uh, and this particular case is usually the smallest so uh, usually the smallest so but this does not necessarily have to be uh, the case so usually the smallest value of n so in uh, our example for instance we've already tested this for the first uh, four values of n here so we could take n of these <coughs> and uh, use this <laughs> use it as our base case okay then in step number two um, so step number two is called the inductive hypothesis uh, so in this step we um, assume that the proposition is true the proposition is uh, assumed to be true for some value um, for some integer value so uh, mathematical induction is always concerned with um, so in the Mathematical induction proof n is always an integer for some uh, integer value of n. <clears throat> now this integer value we're going to call it k. So k could be uh, anything. It could be actually the value that we worked out for which we worked out the proposition. <clears throat> and step number one then step number three which is the most important step uh, this step is called the uh, inductive um, step um, this is the inductive uh, step um, here we prove or we test uh, that uh, provided step two is true then the proposition will be true for the next bigger uh, integer okay so um, here it is uh, tested whether uh, provided uh, step two is true um, 
the proposition is uh, also true for the next bigger integer. So the next bigger integer after k is going to be k plus 1. So the domino effect thing is happening between step 2 and step 3. So let me just uh, uh, go back to our proposition here. So the way mathematical induction is going to work is, for instance, suppose we prove this um, for n equals to 2. We've already seen that for n equals to 2, uh, this is going to give us 12. And 12 is divisible by 3. Okay, So this is divisible by 3. So we can uh, conclude that the proposition uh, is true for that particular base case. Um, and then in step number two, we are going to assume that the proposition is true for some other uh, integer uh, k, k. So we assume that the proposition is true for n equals to k. Um, <clears throat> of course, k uh, could be any number. Indeed, k could be this um, value that we just proved, k. Okay? But we don't use a particular number to make it general. We use uh, the variable k, so that means could be this one, it could be the next one, it could be any number along this column here. Then in step number three, we test that provided this is true, then the proposition is going to be true for this next bigger one. Okay, so this is the step uh, thing that is happening or the domino effect thing that is happening with this method What this means because K could be anything um, It means for instance if we choose if K is uh, Just make an example here if K is 15 Then the formula is going to be true also for 16 okay but again if it's true for 16 it means it's also going to be true for 17 because this is just proving that if it's true for one integer it's going to be true for the next bigger integer if it's true for 17 it's also going to be true for 18 and so this way um, this um, proof or this step will cover all the possible integers without us having to list all of them. Okay, so that is, uh, if you like, the power of uh, mathematical induction. Um, so in the next video, I'm going to look at uh, some examples. Uh, of course, the first example is going to be uh, this proposition here that we uh, sort of based our introductory discussion on. So we're going to prove uh, that indeed this is going to be true for all natural numbers or counting numbers. <clears throat>